Well, it's official. The time has finally come. I mean, we've known that, you know, Elon has talked about it before, but the White House has confirmed the details and it's official. The Tesla supercharger network is gonna be opening up to all EVs. Gosh. Man. There's a lot that's going into this one and there's a whole lot of details we gotta get into. There's a lot of tea in this one. Let's just get right into the details. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna talk about four key elements to all this information, starting with how this new bill is going to change the number of EV chargers, as well as how they're going to implement new regulatory standards. We're also gonna take a look at some questions and concerns that I have about all this, as well as what are the impacts that this is gonna have to Tesla. As you know, we have a big road trip coming up where we will be driving down the entire East Coast from Philadelphia all the way down to Walt Disney World. And well, we're gonna have a lot of stops at Superchargers along the way. So we wanna meet you guys. Come out, a rare chance actually, to meet the entire Locket Tech family. And we're gonna hook some people up with some giveaways, some extra little accessories that we've uh, collected over our time. If you come find us at the Superchargers, we're gonna be hitting along our route. Follow us on our social media. Medias, I'm gonna go ahead, we'll put them all right there. When we're about an hour or so away from a supercharger, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna post on Instagram and I'm gonna post on Twitter where our next supercharger stop is gonna be. We can meet you guys there. Go ahead, charge up your car. We'll be charging up ours. We would love to meet you, come and meet us, but you're gonna have to make sure to follow us on social media because that's where we're gonna let you know. Come and uh, hang out with us. Now, that all of that fun stuff is done and over with. Let's get into the details of this because, well, there's a lot of tea that we gotta spill. Well, we knew that this day would eventually be coming because Elon has always poked fun at Apple and talked about how it was never his intention to create a walled garden with his supercharger network. And with the EV adoption rates just absolutely skyrocketing the way that they have, I mean, EVs alone made up of 10% of all cars sold worldwide in 2022. So it was only a matter of time before the government was gonna have to place some serious resources, the EV charge network across the US and well, that they did. They have pledged $7.5 billion towards improving the EV charging infrastructure. And while well, all the EV charging manufacturers all wanted a piece of the pie. <laughs> including Tesla. Now, part of the $7.5 billion package includes a goal to reach 500,000 EV charging stations available across the US publicly by the year 2030. Tesla's part in all of this is that they have pledged to open up 7,500 chargers across the US. They've agreed to make this happen by the end of 2024. One kind of stipulation in this is that of that 75 500 that Tesla has to make available, only 3,500 have to be actual superchargers. The rest can be a combination of destination chargers and other chargers that are out there, like what you would find in a hotel and things like that. Uh, I mean, come on. Like, you didn't already know that we were gonna have to stop somewhere. And where else are we gonna stop? But my absolute favorite. Oh yeah. Wawa. If anybody from Wawa is watching, my store that I go to all the time, this is the Chalfont Wawa store. And I gotta tell you, the people that work here are unbelievable. They should all get raises. And if anybody's ever in the area, you might see me because I'm here at least once a day, sometimes more than that. If you ever run into me in here, make sure to stop and say hi. I love talking Tesla. Let's get back to all the details. So yeah, Tesla has a pretty big part in this, but they're not the only player involved. Hertz is getting involved as they have pledged to have public EV chargers available at all of their Hertz rental locations. And in addition to that, have 25% of their entire fleet converted to EV by the end of 2024. General Motors and EVgo have teamed up to also get in on the action and they have pledged to build two thousands that are capable of charging at 350 kilowatts per hour with 200 
Plus to be available by the end of this very year. ChargePoint and Mercedes-Benz are also teaming up and they have agreed to build 2,000 500 of the DC fast chargers combined together. Now, ChargePoint wasn't only looking to partner up with Mercedes-Benz because ChargePoint has also teamed up with Volvo and Starbucks of all places. And that partnership has agreed to build 60 DC fast chargers between the Seattle and Denver area by the end of this summer. Now, of course, Ford did not want to be excluded from all of this fun as well. And Ford has agreed to to have a minimum of one public facing DC charger available at a total of 1,920 of their Ford dealerships across the country by the end of January 2024. And last but not least, you know you can't have a major EV charging infrastructure bill without having Electrify America try to jump in on it as well. Electrify America teamed up with Travel Centers of America and they will be opening 1,000 chargers at 200 different locations over the next five years. In addition to lining up all these new chargers that are gonna be coming out, the government also decided to put some new charging standards in place as well for EV chargers. The first of which is that they want a consistent plug type and they have decided on the J1772 slash CCS for DC fast charging to be the standard across the country. That has already kind of been the standard for the most part. Tesla is really the only EV manufacturer out there that uses a different plug type they use their own proprietary one now in addition to that they also have to guarantee 97 percent uptime reliability that's like a joke right <laughs> i can't wait to see how some of these other charge manufacturers intend to comply with the 97 percent uptime rate because that's really the biggest thing plaguing the non-tesla ev charge market out there is none of them are reliable my own experience with electrify america i don't even know if i would say it's 50 percent uptime reliable however you know that is kind of interesting because they show uptime reliability of probably like 100 percent but when you actually get there it's a much different story the bill also states that they need to enact a single method of being able to identify yourself at these chargers. In other words, they don't want people to have to have 10 different charge apps. And every time you go to a different type of charging station out there, you have to download that charging station's application and set up an account and have your credit card information all over the place. So those are all the details of the bill itself. I think they have a pretty solid plan in place and they've tied in a lot of key partners. However, I do have some concerns around this whole charger reliability factor because honestly that's the biggest stumbling block in my opinion of non Tesla EVs to have a larger adoption rate people need to know if they go to a charging station that they can rely that it's gonna be open and it's gonna be functional and that they can actually charge up imagine that people want to be able to pull into a charger and be able to charge duh number one being how are they planning to enforce that 97% uptime requirement most of them are down all the time and even even worse, most of them will show that they're up when you look in their app, but then when you get there, you find out it's actually not working. If you want the adoption rate to continue and you want to press more of our country to switch over to electric, this is going to be the first obstacle that you're going to have to tackle. Probably one of the biggest concerns that I have that impacts Tesla as well. What are they going to do to prevent icings from happening? You travel all the way to a supercharger, but you can't use it because there's a bunch of gas vehicles parked in the parking spot. That sucks. Boo! And there's really nothing that you can do about it. Currently, the way it stands right now, it's up to the property owner of where those chargers reside to enforce those rules of EV only parking spots. And while many of those property owners, they don't want to get involved in the matter. All right, how is it going to affect Tesla? So although my initial thought was not that of excitement when I found out that Tesla was gonna be opening up its supercharger network. I gotta say, all in all, it's really not that bad. I mean, number one, we're only talking about 3,500 superchargers that they're gonna be opening up. Tesla's been working very, very hard at continuing to build tons of superchargers all over the country. So I don't really think that this is going to impact that all that much. And number two, more EV adoption means more manufacturing 
manufacturers making EV, which then in turn also means more manufacturers proving the technology around batteries. That is only a good thing. I think that we are very close to seeing EVs come out with range capability of up to 500 miles and charging capabilities where if you do have a battery pack that can handle that, you can go and plug in and charge all the way back up in 20 minutes. Maybe we're close to the capability of being able to take a 300 mile range vehicle and go to a supercharger and be able to charge back up in just five minutes. More EV adoption means more technology, means growth in the industry in general. And well, I'm all for that. I think it's a good thing overall. Tesla owners out there, I don't think now is the time to fret. Uh, another option, another option. Jeez, okay, settle down, everyone. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Number one, what do you think about Tesla opening up its network? And what do you think about the future of EVs in general? If you enjoyed the information in this video, please make sure to smash that like button down below. That's your way of letting YouTube and the algorithm know that this video is worth sharing to others. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please join the Locket Tech family and hit that subscribe button down below. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna tell you right now, in anticipation that you're gonna go click that button right now. Welcome to the family. If you wanna see a really good video with all the latest and top accessories for 2023 for Tesla, go ahead and click that right there. And if you wanna see a video with some tips, tricks, and hacks for your Tesla, go ahead and click that right down here. Thank you so much for watching guys and we will see you in another one real soon.